PhDs are hard and I kind of wish that I knew this before starting. So let me share it with you. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. It is great to be broadcasting from England because I've just finished my first year of my PhD at Cornell, which is really exciting. Yay! So I've come home for a little bit of a vacation back to the UK and I thought that this would be a really good time to reflect on the things that I've learned during my first year of my PhD and the things that I wish I knew before starting my PhD that probably would have made the transition into graduate school life and the whole kind of thing just a little bit easier. I know that it's the summer coming up and people are going to be starting their full PhDs or prepping for application season. We've got the summer ahead of us, which is a nice open space, hopefully, for us to focus on getting ready for graduate school life. So as a part of that, I wanted to share the top 10 things that I learned from my PhD in my first year. And let me pass it on to you guys. Let's dive in. Okay, so for number one, I'm going to start with the single most important thing that I wish I knew. And that is that you don't have to have everything figured out right away. When I applied for my PhD, I honestly thought that like, okay, I've applied, I've found this program, this is kind of the area I'm interested in and that's it, that's stuck. I can't change my mind. That could not be more wrong. As you learn on this training program, because it is a training program, more and become exposed to more different areas of research, be prepared that your ideas may evolve and it's okay to not have everything figured out right away. The PhD is preparing you to know these things later on. And again, this brings me on, oh, yes, I'm sorry. And again, this brings me on to number two, which is knowing who to ask is way more important than knowing what to do. If you don't know what to do next or not sure of the next step or everything, that can be really overwhelming. And I've definitely felt this as an international student. So like, I feel you guys. The network of support available to you at these colleges is so, so great. So knowing who to ask and how to take advantage of that can be super beneficial. I know that I did not have everything figured out and did not know a lot of things. However, I learned where my international services was, who my dean was, where to go to for advice, who my peer mentors were, like take advantage of these networks and know who to ask. It's way more important than knowing what to do. Now let's go into the more sciencey seat things and like academic things. Science goes wrong. It does. It will always take longer than you think. Reagents won't arrive. Experiments won't go to plan. So you might be ill or, or sick one day. Like science goes wrong. You might not get the results you want and things don't always go to plan. And understanding that just how science works and not a reflection on you as a scientist is something that I really, really wish I knew. And just being able to, when you're planning experiments, like factor in time for this failure so that later on down the line, you don't get stressed. This brings me on to number four, which is establishing what progress looks like from day one for you. So whether that is working towards like finishing this experiment or figuring out this part of the experiment, like having a conversation with people on your team, like what they expect from you and like what you expect from yourself and setting and breaking it up into little bite-sized chunks, I found really, really important. And it's really helped me kind of monitor my progress over the first year. I kind of touched on this, but number five is splitting your goals up. So I kind of, I don't know when you start a PhD, like you kind of have the overarching goal, but splitting that into smaller milestones. So you're not just feeling like you're a aimlessly wandering towards your publication like you split that up into things you can do on a weekly basis so then it just gives you something to tick off on your to-do list and that is so much more fun we need we need to celebrate the little wins in life otherwise it's all very sad so number six, the other one that I want to cover is it's okay to change your mind. Maybe you thought you were really interested in topic A and you found out that topic B is where your calling is. That is okay. Having open conversations and being open to exploring different areas of research, I think is one of the great advantages of like doing a PhD in the first place, to be honest. Um, for example, I applied with one concentration in mind that I was going to do and now my like interest has completely changed into something else and that is okay. Like, and that's something that we should celebrate and not beat ourselves up. It's definitely something that I wish I knew before starting. Number seven, Take time for yourself because nobody else will. This was a hard one to learn, but it is so, so, so important and something that I wish I knew when I was starting out. If you feel yourself getting sick or burning out and you need a break, take that break. Taking little breaks is very, very beneficial um, and something that you shouldn't feel guilty about, in my opinion. Obviously, within like reason, like a couple of hours at the end of the day to unwind and just do something for yourself. I guess when you're starting a PhD, there's like a lot of social pressure as well to like make knows of new friends and oh my goodness this is where I'm going to be for the next few years like you want to um fit in and like have friends and like it'd be fun like obviously and it's gonna be fine but if you're feeling overwhelmed burnt out sick like it's okay to say no to things and take that time for yourself because nobody else will 
Okay, so this is another fun one, which I actually kind of really like, and it is working on non-science skills. Working on these scientific skills is obviously super important for your PhD or the specialist skills in whatever PhD you're doing. It doesn't necessarily have to be science, but it is important to focus on non-sciencey, non-academic skills is so important. This includes things like scientific communication, scientific writing, presenting, networking, how to communicate with others professionally. Things like this, I think is really, really, really important important to learn during your PhD. Learning how to do these non-science skills will really help you come out the other side as like a well-rounded researcher and I think that is super super important. So before we wrap up this lovely little information packed video I want to leave you with number 10 get LinkedIn this is something that I talk about so much and I'm a massive LinkedIn fan but getting it early and starting that networking early is an incredible way to ensure you're building your network from day one connecting with your peers your faculty members everything because you like these ultimately are the people that you're going to be able to go to and ask for advice and building that network early on is really 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 important so I'd say LinkedIn is a great place to start for that I did do a video on LinkedIn which I will link down below um because I love it I'm a massive massive LinkedIn fan especially like in your second year and beyond when you come to look for internships like you're looking for jobs you're looking for where you want to be after your PhD having that network and a, a professional online presence is invaluable so we have come to the end of another video I hope you guys have enjoyed this one it's a little bit short and jam-packed and information packed but I came from a background with very very limited research experience as you probably know from my other videos if you've been watching for a while so I was really nervous and had like kind of imposter syndrome about starting my PhD I was like am I really supposed to be here? Following these tips really helped put me at ease and so I wanted to share it for those of you entering into your PhD and it's something to bear in mind if you're in application season again and you're coming up to this. So yes, don't forget to drop me a like, drop me a comment if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to my channel for more PhD related content and I will see you guys next week. Bye!